Hi, my name is Erin Ryder. I'm a social work supervisor here at the Residential Treatment Center at Green Chimneys. And this month in our parent training series, we're going to be talking about therapeutic crisis intervention skills, specifically the stress model of crisis and active listening as a form of crisis communication. So when we talk about crisis, what do we mean? Well, when a child goes into crisis, we basically understand that to mean that they have exhausted or maybe have never learned ways of coping with intense emotional stress or pain, and that we as adults in that moment really need to come in with providing emotional support, um, and then to teaching them new ways of coping once they return to baseline. So how do we provide that emotional support in that moment? Well, one of the many ways that we can do that is through a skill called active listening. And the goal of active listening is to convey that we at least have a sincere desire to understand what is happening for the child in this moment. In their world, what are they experiencing? And there's a few ways that we can do that. We do that both through nonverbal and verbal communication. In our parent training, we'll get a chance to do this through role plays and through scenarios. But just to give you a taste of that, some of the things that we do um, in nonverbal communication is um, nodding, um, having a calm facial expression, right? So not furrowing our brow or rolling our eyes. Um, and tone of voice is so much more about the way that we say things and so much less about the words that we say. In crisis, we know that kids really aren't so much listening to the words that we say, but how we are communicating what we say. Body posture and position. So anytime that you can kind of get down to the kid's level, um, sit down when possible so that you're not towering over a child, those are certain things that you can do to show that you are really trying to kind of be at their level and have a relaxed body posture so that um, you can engage in a dialogue with them. Silence is a tool that you can use um, to have a more open communication with a child and uh, not in a sense of, of uh, waiting them out, but really just as a way to give them space to communicate with you and also uh, just this idea that less is more oftentimes, that we don't want to overload them with words that oftentimes just giving them time and really not interrupting them if they are communicating with us. And in terms of the tone of voice, being careful to be slow, calm, and deliberate in our speech rather than talking really fast or really intensely because when a child is in crisis, they're oftentimes going to pick up on that and be really sensitive to that. Okay, for some verbal techniques that we can use to help elicit um, cooperative and, and, and helpful communication from students and also to help de-escalate. So certain things that we can do um, are using understanding responses. So things like, mm -hmm, okay, I see, right? Those are some, some encouraging responses that you can use. And then any kind of other techniques that you use, you really want to do anything that's going to both reflect and affirm whatever other things your child is expressing to you. And the goal of that is to help your child sort out what's happening for them. So a reflective response is gonna mirror what your child is saying or feeling. So if your child says to you that they're upset with a peer, you might say back to them, wow, it sounds like that was really difficult. It sounds like you're really upset with them, right? And of course, anything that you say, you have to bring your own flavor into it and make sure that it sounds authentic. And um, it could be that they're upset with you and you might not agree with it. And it could be like, okay, I hear that you were really upset with me right now. And the next one would be summarization. So after they've drained everything and they're saying what they felt, you might want to just do a quick summary of what they're saying. And you might say something like, you know what, let me see if I can summarize. Um, or let me see if I understand uh, what's going on for you. Um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, right? And get a sense of, of what's going on. And really the goal of all of this active listening is, is to encourage kids to connect their thoughts and their feelings um, and to model trying to understand another person's point of view. Wouldn't we love it if kids could see things from another person's point of view? So we wanna show that skill to them by practicing it with them. 
and really allowing and encouraging um, kids to communicate with us. And any techniques that we use that encourages that, I think, are positive. Um, and it helps to build trust in our relationships with the kids. Um, and it's also a way to respond to what they're feeling rather than necessarily to what they're doing. Um, I hope that this was helpful and I really hope that you join us for our parent training so that we can teach um, some more skills and continue on this journey together. Thanks everyone, have a great day.